is the youngest American ever executed. Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today we'll be discussing the trial of Hannah O'Keish. Now before we get started, I should note, there are two children who die in this story, so if that's not your cup of tea or you're a little bit squeamish, go watch another video, something more light, uh, come back for another time. I should also note that because my title of this video is a bit risque, there are probably people watching this channel who have never watched before, and I should let you know that this channel generally focuses on the American Revolution and the more obscure founders of the United States, and therefore at the end of this video when I tie this into the American Revolution, well, that's why. If you're interested in that, I put out videos like this five days a week, so make sure you hit subscribe, and if you enjoy this video, definitely hit like. Anyway, on to the story. So, before we can discuss Hannah O'Keefe, we need to discuss Eunice Bowles. Eunice Bowles was a six-year-old girl who lived in New London, Connecticut. And she went to school one day and, unfortunately, was murdered. Now, when she was found, it was pretty obvious that she had been beaten and strangled to death, but her killer had placed rocks on top of her body to make it appear that a rock wall had fallen down on her. Now, they quickly realized that it was not the rock wall that killed her, and they began questioning people, and early on they started questioning a 12-year-old named Hannah O'Keefe. Now, Hannah O'Keefe was probably a little bit uh, mentally slow. Uh, she was also, I've seen her described as both part Native American and as a mulatto, which indicates she may have been part uh, African American. So, uh, although I'm not, we are not entirely sure what her ethnicity was, she was not white, which definitely did not help her cause in this situation in Ju July of 1786. So, they question uh, Hannah O'Keefe, and, and she says, well, I saw Eunice, but she was with four older boys. And they say, okay, that's strange, and they leave. And they come back the next day, and they question her again, and she says the same thing. So they take her to the Bowles residence and put her in front of the body. And as soon as she sees Eunice... Hannah breaks down crying and admits to killing her. And she says that Hannah had seen, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Eunice had seen Hannah stealing some strawberries and was going to tattle on her. And, well, Hannah didn't know how else to handle the situation, so she killed her. So, that's when we go to trial. And, and this speaks heavily to, to changing attitudes in 1786. Because right when the trial begins, Shay's Rebellion is breaking out just north in Massachusetts. So, and it's only a year before they write and sign the United States Constitution. But the case was overseen by a man named Richard Law, who was a former Continental Congressman. But he, the way he oversaw it was kind of a relic of days past. For the longest time in New England, it was judges weren't necessarily seen as overseeing a trial they were there to interrogate a witness until they admitted guilt. And for a very long time in New England, witnesses would admit guilt because the judge represented God and was speaking on behalf of God. And if you had committed a crime, you were doing it in the eyes of God. It wasn't innocent until proven guilty. It was, God knows what you did, so out with it. Now, as I said, times were changing and we were starting a republic at this time. But they go to trial trial and she's immediately convicted and held in prison for a few days and then she's brought out she hannah O'Keefe politely thanks her jailers for their kindness and then at 12 years and nine months old was executed by hanging in front of a crowd of onlookers and this makes her the youngest person ever executed now what's very very not peculiar but interesting about the hanging is immediately after uh, a man named Henry Channing, Reverend Henry Channing, gave a speech, a sermon, in fact, discussing the necessity of parents to instruct their children in the ways of God. And after he gave the speech, it was published. And for, as I said, a very long time in New England, this was customary, was you wouldn't publish the trial notes you would publish the sermon given afterwards as an instructional method to help the people, and in this case, their children, do better in the future. Now, approximately the same time, to acknowledge how things were changing, approximately the same time, there's a famous trial, The People vs. Levi Weeks in New York City, where Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr famously teamed up to defend someone being accused of murder. 
that trial would have its note published, either in whole or in part, trials uh, notations and transcripts being published would quick would quickly after the murder of Hannah O'Keefe. I'm sorry, the execution of Hannah O'Keefe was published. Uh, things quickly changed. As I had said, it was already changing. Places like Boston was focusing more on law trials. New York City, bigger cities, but smaller towns like New London was at the time still followed these traditional methods. Especially in Connecticut, which at the time still had a state religion. And that is another story entirely, but uh, there wouldn't be for another 30 years that the Toleration Party would end the state religion in Connecticut, well after the Constitution was signed. So that, in a nutshell, is the story of Hannah O'Keefe and her murder of Eunice Bowles and how it reflects on changing times during the American Revolution. Again, this was, you know, she was executed December 20th, 1786. It would be about five months before the Constitutional Convention met. And, you know, nowadays, times, things began changing immediately, to the point where nowadays, we would never think of executing a child, no matter how heinous the crime. You know, some children are tried as adults, but, I mean, 12 years old, that's tough. That's a very young age, although I shouldn't get into that, because now we're getting into modern politics, and we don't talk about that on this channel. We talk about the American founding. So, this video was a little bit different than most of the ones I discuss, but... It's a very interesting story, and it does reflect on attitudes during the American Revolution, specifically in Connecticut, but uh, I think we touched a little bit on the broader range of how jury trials were being given to the public after they were had and during their the trial itself. So, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please hit like. As I said before, uh, definitely hit subscribe. If you're new here, I put out videos like this five days a week, and we do a live one on Saturday uh, where I discuss the six, the seven articles I published on my website, Founder of the Day, the previous week. Thank you so much for watching, and I will be back to you with another Founder on Monday.